Hello, welcome to Memo Conversations. I'm a video producer, Osman Butt. Sudan is currently undergoing a serious crisis. Since the 15th of April, there have been major clashes between uh, across different Sudanese states between the army and the so-called rapid support forces. The situation is quite dire in Sudan right now, where hundreds have been killed, many have been displaced, and a lot of people have fled to the country. Helping us today to make sense of what is happening in Sudan, I'm joined by Ula Ibrahim. She is a member of the press office for the Khartoum Resistance Committee. She is also a visual arts teacher, architect and urban designer. Ula, welcome to Memo Conversations. Hello. I think uh, I want to start by saying, you know, and I know I speak for everyone at Middle East Monitor, our uh, thoughts and prayers are with the people of Sudan at this very, very difficult time. It's been truly harrowing to see the pictures coming out of Sudan. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's really beyond words to sort of describe what we're seeing. Um, all we can say is that there's a lot of horror happening right now um, and a lot of uncertainty. Um, with that in mind, though, could you please perhaps tell us, you know, what has been happening in Sudan in recent weeks and, you know, what is happening now? Okay. Well, uh, we woke up on the morning of uh, 15 April at uh, 7 a.m. Uh, to the sound of heavy uh, weapon explosion in the south of Khartoum. Uh, I work at uh, a university near to uh, campground uh, of uh, rabbit support force. And my student sent me in the morning warning me not to come to the university because they see the heavy uh, deployment of force in civilian area. Uh, after that, a series of sudden military movement began for uh, the rabbit support force in uh, a civilian area in the city of Khartoum, include the Khartoum International Airport, uh, the general uh, command of the Sudanese army, uh, which by the way, uh, it's in the heart of the city of Khartoum and also the presidential palace Hours later, uh, it's turned into armed uh, confrontations between the army force and the rapid support force, which have continued uh, so far. Uh, today is the uh, 13th day of armed comfort, uh, confrontations uh, between the two sides of conflict, uh, which left uh, 500 uh, dead and 4,000 injured. Uh, according to the, and that's according to the statistic of the Ministry of Health, but slightly uh, the number of, uh, of people is much higher than uh, that. Uh, now Sudanese are going through a critical humanitarian uh, situation uh, as, uh, as the number of refugees has been increased since the beginning of conflict. Uh, I can say uh, that um, a third of residential of my neighborhood um, uh, right now is refugees in a uh, safer state uh, uh, in Sudan. Uh, the health situation is a very uh, sad. There is no health care. Uh, medicine have run out. Most of hospital closed uh, due to bumping or lack of um, resourcing. Uh, and uh, uh, access to drink water and food is very difficult. Uh, and but this is still uh, laying at uh, the road. Uh, and, and that's it. You were also mentioning to me before we started that there were food shortages and, you know, other issues with access to electricity. Could you perhaps tell us a little bit more about what has been the daily impact of this fighting on for everyday people in Khartoum? Um, actually, the, the lack of access to electricity, uh, electricity, electricity uh, doesn't help people uh, to live to uh, to access to uh, to uh, their food, uh, to a drink water, and uh, and that's it. I'm wondering what the situation of the people who are fleeing the country is. What what's happening there? Who's leaving and why? Uh, 
they leave because the situation in in Khartoum is is totally unsafe. Uh, I I told you before there is uh, uh, no any type of civilian life in Khartoum right now. Uh, you can uh, uh, bombing by the by the by the. Uh, ministry, uh, sorry, by the uh, army force or by uh, the other force in your house, uh, and there is no uh, any um, type of life here in Khartoum. And how did we get to this point? So the fighting broke out on the in you know middle of April. What was happening? You know what is causing all this? You know, fighting between the RFF or RSF and the army. Okay, we uh, well we got here through uh, the military council uh, COP on the twenty fifteenth of uh, October. Uh, actually, the count the council consists of leader in the army uh, headed by uh, Al Burhan uh, uh, with the uh, Hemeti commander of the rapid support force with the help of element uh, from the al-Bashir regime. This uh, COP uh, blocked the way for the civil the democratic transformation that the Sudanese uh, sought uh, after the revolution. Uh, after uh, a year and a half of COP, General Al-Burhan was not even able to form a uh, uh, a great take of government be, uh, because of the uh, uh, popular rejection uh, and uh, uh, resistant of civil force and uh, the uh, the resistant committee uh, movement. Uh, now it appears that uh, the two generals uh, are engaged in a power struggle. Uh, also, uh, I think the the conflict between the two generals uh, become public when the agenda of uh, framework agreement, which is a civilian agreement, uh, and the uh, and uh, uh, which is a civilian uh, agreement, which refers to the integration of armed movement and rabbit support into a unified national uh, army. Uh, Sudanese see the conflict as a, a, a just power struggle between the two generals. Uh, and we, well, of course, everyone in the uh, street uh, are reject the war, uh, which is likely to turn into a civil war uh, between uh, ethnic or, or rational uh, components. Uh, they are fears actually among the people here about the struggle of uh, uh, regional or international power inside the, uh, the, the Sudan. Yes, you've mentioned obviously the fact that there's a clash between two generals. Yes. Um, and, you know, the rapid support force, this is technically outside of the structure of the army and they were to be integrated into the army but there's resistance so could you tell our audience who are the rapid support force who, who makes them up who controls them what are they uh who who make the pumps yeah who who are who is the rapid support force who are they because they're not part of the army they're a militia group yeah, there is a, a rapid support force. Is a, a, a militia was um, issued by uh, uh, General Al Bashir. Uh, that the the last uh, uh, president, and uh, also army uh, uh, leaders. Uh, Al Burhan is the. Uh, for us is a dictatorship uh, who who make the uh, the uh, military council cope in uh, in last year yes it's uh, so you are um so my next question relates to how revolutionary committees are responding and reacting to these events because as i mentioned you are a member of the resistance uh, committee in Khartoum. what's the reaction to these events from this committee 
Okay, uh, I I see. I said that the resistance committee uh, see the the clash between the military uh, components as a struggle uh, for control and uh, power and wealth. Uh, for us, uh, the army leadership represent uh, a cartel uh, as the army control 18% of the Sudanese resources. Uh, the rabbit, uh, also the rabbit support uh, forces are uh, a militia of uh, uh, control in, in some resources of Sudan like gold. Um, uh, they also control. Uh, uh, they also uh, control the uh, local resources. Uh, therefore, the resistance committee view the conflict as a struggle within the military that will not achieve any gain for the revolution. Uh, this struggle uh, also seek to bring us back to the era of dictatorship. Therefore, we cannot support any side. Uh, now, in light of uh, the complete absence of any form of uh, uh, government in Sudan, resistance committee operate field hospital to treat the uh, intrude in uh, every neighborhood, provide uh, medicine and medical uh, aid through networking with the Ministry of uh, Health and. Uh, NGOs uh, and local uh, um, organization uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, it also coordinating the logistic and link to the supply chain of drink water and food with the uh, residents of the neighborhood. Uh, also, neighborhood uh, committee or resistance committee working in high coordina uh, coordination with the neighborhood members. Uh, and almost that happened in every uh, neighborhood uh, in this country. So these are the Hartum Resistance Committee. Uh, how long have you guys been active? When does it go back to? Okay, uh, resistant uh, committee is uh, our grassroots organization uh, organized within residential uh, neighborhood in Sudan. It began to uh, form an uh, uh, urban neighborhood and in a village since uh, 2013. Uh, actually, in the uh, and in the 2018, uh, with the outbreak of the Sudanese uh, revolution against the Al Bashir regime, uh, it's come back to coordinate the, uh, and, and and directing the demonstration, uh, as well as uh, in coordination with other civil force such as trade union and uh, political force. Uh, so we're receiving like reports that many of Omar al-Bashir's um, members of his former regime who were in, you know, custody or in prison have disappeared, you know, and Omar al-Bashir, I think, has been transferred to hospital, according to official yes. reports. What's What role are, are, is he playing in all of this? Obviously, he's not directly in charge anymore. But, you know, these are some of the people he, you know, were part of his forces, the rapid support force. So what role does he play? Well, I think it's, uh, this is the circumstances uh, of uh, um, the, the COPE, the Military Council COPE. And um, uh, um, I think this scope, this is, is uh, uh, just how I can say that it's just a uh, self opinion that uh, this scope is uh, supported by, by the, uh, the, the last regime of Al Bashir. So this is one of circumstances of this scope. Mm -hmm. And where, when we talk about Al-Burhan, who's obviously the head of the army, what was his relationship like to Omar Bashir before the 2019 revolution? Uh, 
uh, al-Bashir is one of the leaders, uh, it was one of the leaders of the army and uh, Burhan uh, uh, is also right now is one of the leaders of the army. Mm, mm, mm. And what do you make of the international response to the Sudan, what's happening in Sudan so far? What? Uh, what do you think of the international response coming from the United States, the European Union and others towards what's happening in Sudan? OK, uh, I think uh, the world m must understand that we in the resistance committee, uh, we uh, have were still with the regime for four uh, for four years during uh, or during four years, uh, which is revolution never stopped. We will continue to resist until the establishment of civilian government. Uh, yani in in which. Uh, there is no way to impose the political agenda by force of armies again. And do you feel the the United States, the European Union, understand that, or are they, in your opinion, taking the side of, say, the military? Uh, to some extent, yes, uh, I think that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you've mentioned all of the activities the resistance, Hatum Resistance Committee is involved with, with regards to hospitals, uh, running, helping run services. But what is the, how, is there any sense that you're going to obviously oppose the new regime that's coming in? What activities do you think you'll do in the future? What? Uh, I'm so, I'm asking about um as this event unfolds as what the fighting unfolds uh in addition to all the services the Hartum resistance committee is performing what kind, what else will it be doing to oppose these the fighting okay uh uh after the COP uh of 25th of october uh uh the resistant committee returned to uh resist uh the COP by mobilizing uh daily demonstration inside the neighborhood and in front in front of the uh um republican palace uh uh to overthrow the COP during um uh during that years it's also uh issued a political uh charter that represent uh its political vision for the government uh governance of sudan and could you tell us about that governance that the charter uh, as best as you can <laughs> it's very hard i can send to you to the 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 chart it's okay it's all right but uh you just broadly speaking you want what more democratic governance and you want i imagine parliamentary elections how does it uh, what is the solution to this current crisis for sudan uh i think the the uh the solution is uh make the army away from the the political uh, issue and uh, make a unified uh, army. And where do you see the current fighting? Where do you see all of this going? What is the future of it? I mean, is this going to end in a few days, a few weeks, or what's going to happen, in your opinion? Actually, no one, no one uh, can uh, answer this question. Just uh, Burhan and Hamidi who can answer this question. We have a lot of people in our audience who are very concerned by events in Sudan. Um, what would you recommend they should be looking out for in terms of developments in Sudan? What should they be watching out for? Um, You can see that the 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 civilian movement of resistance committee 
uh, I think it's ideal uh, uh, resistant committee right now. It's uh, work for four years to uh, to to make uh, to make a democracy in Sudan. And what uh, kind of help do you think people from the outside of Sudan should give to Sudan? I'm talking about people, you know, across different countries. You appear to have uh, lost Ula Ibrahim there. Hello to our audience. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, but we are now up again and running. And I'm still with Ula. Ula, please um, uh, tell us a little bit more about the relationship between Al Burhan and Omar Bashir. Well, Al Burhan was uh, a member of a uh, kind of committee uh, called uh, the Sudanese uh, Supreme Security Committee. Uh, it's committee whose member were chosen by the Al Bashir regime to protect him. Uh, on the other one, uh, on the other side, uh, also General Hamidi uh, and the rabbit support militia were formed by Al Bashir uh, to carry out military operation in Darfur and also to protect him. Yes, and um, could you perhaps uh, tell us about the Khartoum Resistance Committee? Um, you guys have obviously proposals for what you want the future of Sudan to be. Could you tell us what those proposals are? Uh, uh, a group of in the last year, a group of Sudanese uh, resistance committee signed uh, the People's Power Charter, uh, which uh, stipulate uh, an end to military cops in Sudan, uh, also a refusal to uh, partner with the uh, counter revolutionary uh, forces and uh, stresses to exclusion of the military establishment from political life. And what can, you know, a lot of people in our audience are quite concerned by events in Sudan. What can they do to sort of help the situation? Uh, I think we need to hear our voice, uh, the resistance committee, uh, uh, voice to stop the clash between the military components uh, and to return to the path of uh, democratic transformation and to support the campaign. You can also support the campaign Stop War in Sudan. Um, resistance Committee believe that the international community uh, has not been strong uh, in supporting the uh, democratic uh, transformation in Sudan. Uh, he kept, uh, they kept uh, waiving personal sanctions actions against generals uh, Abdul Fattah al-Burhan and Hamidi, but nothing uh, happened. Uh, the most, uh, the world must hear and respect our choice. Uh, uh, to freedom, peace, and uh, justice. Is there anything else you'd like to add that I haven't asked about? Uh, I hope that the suffering of the Sudanese will end, uh, that the resistant committee success in reaching the goal of the revolution, uh, which is the removing the military from political life, stopping repeated copes, uh, obtained a democratic uh, civil system, uh, justice for war crime, uh, which practiced by the previous and current military regimes. Ulu Ibrahim, thank you for joining us at Memo Conversation. Thank you. And to our audience, thank you for tuning in. Please do tune in next time for more Memo Conversations.